Hey. Turned off my thing. Your thing? What thing? Hey. <laughs> you look adorable. Uh, oh, yeah, it is the lamb thing. I just wanted to wear it today. I don't know if it really does anything, honestly, except make my brain feel all nice and squishy. Uh, it's Anna. I'm trying to turn it around so you can see her. This thing is... Uh, hi. It's Julie. Hi, Julie. Stuck. There we go. There we go. Okay. Mom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're so good to us. So, so good to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We cannot thank you enough. You're so good. Let me turn this down a little bit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, for bringing us to this place again tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for Kavod Impact Center where we can come and we can gather and we can just lift you up. We can praise you and worship you and come to you and pray and just seek you. Hallelujah. We are grateful for this time, Father. Thank you for Anna for being online tonight. Just pray that she's blessed. Thank you for Julie for being here and her dedication for showing up. Thank you for their heart to seek you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for my husband, for Stephen, for his support, for his dedication, Father, to ministry and what it is that you called him to do. Just thank you. We just cannot thank you enough, Father. You're so good to us. Oh, and in the midst of all the chaos and all the things that we're seeing happening all around us, you have kept us another day. You've kept us one more hour, one more second, one more minute. You have kept us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for keeping us, for preserving us, for coming to our rescue. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we woke up today. We have breath in our lungs today. We can see and behold the glorious things that you have created. We can see, we can smell, and we can taste. We can walk and we can talk. We can hear. Hallelujah. We can praise you. Hallelujah. You're alive. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Only by your mercy. It's only by your mercy. We are grateful. We just want to show our gratitude to you tonight. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah for the breath of life. Let's just take a breath. Just take a breath and as we breathe in, just think about it. The breath of life that we've been given Hallelujah. For the breath of life. Mm. Father, we take so much for granted. 
so much for granted. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for taking so many things for granted. We're so blessed. We're so, so blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you for strength. Thank you for strength today. Thank you that we have courage. We have courage in the face of fear. We have faith. You have given us faith in the face of fear. Hallelujah. We can have peace in the face of confusion. When there's confusion all around, we can stand in your peace, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. In the midst of anxiety, when anxiety is just trying to surround us, we can have peace. We can have joy. You give us strength. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Yeshua, for your shed blood, for your sacrifice. Thank you that you sought us, you bought us with your own blood. You purchased us, Yeshua. Hallelujah. You ransomed us. We were captives. We were captives to sin, slaves to sin and unrighteousness. And you called us out. You ransomed us. Hallelujah. You paid the price that we owed. You paid the price that we were meant to pay. Hallelujah. We didn't have to hang up on that stake. We didn't have to take that beating. We didn't have to take that, Yeshua. You took it for us. Hallelujah. We're grateful. We're grateful, Lord. And we just give you reverence tonight, Yeshua. We bow in reverence to you, King Yeshua, the Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our song. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of our praise, Yeshua. You are worthy of our song. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Of it all. For from you are all. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Yeshua. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Let me sing that again. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all, Yeshua, for from you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. And all the saints, 
and angels they bow before your throne and all the elders cast their crowns before the lamb of the unseen you are worthy of it all you are worthy you are worthy of it all yeshua for from you are all and to you are all things you deserve the glory you deserve it all you are worthy of it all every breath you're worthy you are worthy of it all yeshua for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory, all the glory, oh, day and night, night and day, let worship rise. Day and night, night and day, let worship arise. Day and night, night and day, let worship arise. Oh, day and night, night and day. Because you are worthy of it all. You are worthy, you are worthy of it all. Yes, you For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. We give you glory. We give you honor, we give you praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeshua, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our song. You are worthy of our lives. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of every breath. You are worthy of every step that we take in this life. You are worthy. And we just come tonight again and we just present ourselves to you, Yeshua. We present ourselves to you. Hallelujah. We give you honor. We declare you are king. You are Lord. You are the only one who can save. You're the only one who can heal. You're the only one who delivers and breaks chains and rescues out of bondage. You are the only one who can. You're the only one who will. Hallelujah. There's no other way. You are the truth. You are the way, you are the life, you are our life, you sustain us, you give us life, Yeshua, we are nothing without you, we are nothing apart from you, without you we can do nothing, it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being, hallelujah. Those are just not words on a page, but those are truth. It's truth. It's our truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you. 
I just want to thank him tonight. I just can't stop thanking him tonight. Let's just thank him right where we are. Let's just thank him. You're so good to us. You deserve so much more. You deserve so much more, Yeshua. Heavenly Father, you deserve so much more. Forgive us for when we've held back. You are worthy of it all. Forgive us, Father. Where we've withheld, when you've called us deeper, when you've called us closer, when you've called us into more, when you've called us higher and into a higher level of faith, when we've held back, when we've resisted, Forgive us, Father. Help us to not resist. Help us to not resist when you call, no matter where we are, no matter what we may be doing, no matter what we feel that the day is calling us to do, that we will not resist what you are calling us to in that very moment. Give us ears to hear clearly. It's in the midst of distractions, in the midst of daily distractions and chaos and schedules and things that we feel that we need to do and accomplish. Help us to hear what you desire for us to do and accomplish and the purpose that you have for us to fulfill, Father, in the name of Yeshua. You're calling us deeper. You're calling us higher. You're calling us closer. So we just draw near to you tonight, Father. You said in your word that if we would draw near to you, you would draw near to us. So we come to draw near. We come to draw close. We are desperate for you. We are desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. And I, I'm lost without you. I'm desperate for you. Yeshua, this is the air I breathe. Oh, this is the air I breathe. Your holy presence is living. This is my daily bread, Yeshua, you are my daily bread, your very word spoken to me. And I, I'm lost without you, Yeshua. And I, I'm desperate for you, Yeshua, I'm lost, and I, I'm lost without you, Yeshua. 
And I that you saw us, that you raised us up out of the pit. Hallelujah. You raised us up out of the pit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just praise you tonight. Yes. Yes. Father, in the name of Yeshua, we just thank you first and foremost for uh, reserving the Catholic Board 28 for uh, keeping it for such a time as that, Father God. We yes. pray also, Father God, as Chuck comes and everyone else travels, Father God, that you prepare Chuck to yes. the word he's supposed to get, Father God, that we get clarity and understanding, Father God, that it flows under the anointing, Father God, that it breaks yokes, Father God, that someone can catch a hold of vision and, and see the importance of what we're doing as well, Father. Uh, the, Father, that the prophetic significance go forward as well, Father God, and how uh, this has come forth even in the word, Father. We just thank you for that day. We pray those that come, Father God, who lead and guide those that are supposed to be there to be there, and the ones that aren't supposed to be there, they will not be able to make it in the name of Yeshua, Father God. Yes. We just thank you for that day. We, we just pray that it can be an appointed time. Father God, for understanding, learning something of you and your desire for what you desire to do in this place, in this community, with your body, Father, and then in the last days. And we just thank you for that, Father, and then be sure, Father God. We pray that we have great fellowship, Father God, to come against the spirit of strife and yes. division, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, Father God. We pray against laziness, lack of faith in the name of Yeshua, faithlessness in the name of Yeshua, Father God, yes. that someone realizes that if it's the work of God, Mm -hmm. That it, he is yes. enough. We don't yes. need anything else, Father God, but we will move forward by faith as he says to build an ark, Father God. In the name of Yeshua, Father God. You, Father. In the name of Yeshua, we just thank you and we praise you, Father God. Yeah. That Noah was a prepper, Father God. So there's nothing wrong with prepping, Father God. So those that come against that say that it is the spirit of fear, Father God. We just come against that spirit right now in the name of Yeshua. Yes. Just trying to obedience yes. to the king. Yeah. As we go forward, Father God, as you see fit. Yes. Father God, not as because we're afraid that we're not going to be able to do this or do that or survive. Or Father, we can go out preaching the gospel and that's no problem whatsoever, Father God. But we go forward by faith because you said so. Yes. You've given yes. us guidance on what to do. So we go forth in obedience to your word mm -hmm. and we're up word over our life, that vision that you've given us, Father God. We just thank you for that. We pray that we come into all the unity of the faith, Father God. In the name of Yeshua, that people come into their proper place in the kingdom. Yes. And they see what they're supposed to do individually. And they catch hold of the vision they have for them, Father. In the name of Yeshua, Father God. We thank you and we praise you. We come against the Nicolaia the spirit in the name of Yeshua. Father God, on that day, Father God, that no one's going to try to control and manipulate it, Father God. But they're just, let's see what the work has to yes. say for us, Father. We just thank you for that. We pray against any manipulation or witchcraft to try to manipulate things on that day. In the name of Yeshua, that people that have uh, uh, false agendas, we yes. come against those things yes. now in the name of Yeshua, Father God. And we just speak life, life more abundantly, Father God. 
that y'all that you just go to a place for your people. Yes, yes. For your people. Yes. For sure. Yes. Yes. Well, I just thank you again for this opportunity to come in here tonight to pray. And we just want to, again, just lift up the family pillar to you tonight, Father. We know how important, how vital family is to you. You designed family. You fashioned family. You have a purpose for family, Father. So we thank you for that tonight. And we just speak life over every family that is connected to Kavode Impact Center, Father. To married households, to single families, Father. To blended families, Father. Those who don't even have a close relationship with their blood family, Father. We thank you that you are creating a family here at Kavod Impact Center, that you are creating strong and healthy relationships. You have given us the mandate. You have called us to walk in love, to walk in unity of the faith. So I pray that that walk of love is strengthened amongst the brethren and the sisters here, that that unity is strengthened among the brethren and sisters here at Kavod Impact Center of House of Hope, that we will truly be a beacon of hope in our communities, in this nation, to the nations, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, in your Torah the healing to the nations. Father, those that are struggling in the family, Father, though that we just want to declare life, healing, restoration, and peace over every household, that it comes into alignment with your word, your purpose, and your design in the mighty name of Yeshua, that families begin to gather for family prayer and worship time and devotion time devoted solely to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, that married couples be strengthened in their relationships, first and foremost, in their individual relationship with you. And as that individual relationship with you is strengthened, that relationship with one another will be strengthened and they can truly walk as one and in unity with your heart and your mind, your purpose and your destiny for their life in the name of Yeshua. We pray that children will be obedient to their parents, that parents will not Provoke their children to wrath. That will rear them up, raise them up in your ways, with your heart. With the discipline that you desire for them to use with their children. But that children will be, obey their parents and know that if they will obey their mother and father, that their days will be prolonged upon the earth. That is your promise to the children if they will obey their mother and father as it is pleasing to you. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, we just pray for single parents, that you strengthen them and give them the wisdom that they need in the rearing up of their children and, and the functioning in their home, um, that you surround single mothers with strong women in the faith that can help come alongside them and strengthen them and encourage them and help them in the capacity that they need to help them in. And the single men, single men, single fathers will, will be surrounded by strong men, righteous men that are sold, sold out to you and walking in obedience to you, Father, that can strengthen them and encourage them and help them to walk out your word and your ways for their life. Just pray for the singles, those that are even seeking to be married, that you Help them to stay chaste. Help them to stay pure as they wait for the right spouse. 
preserve them and keep them and strengthen them that they will not fall into fornication or the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes or the pride of life, but you will keep them, Father, and strengthen them and help them to wait and help them to recognize when it's the right one and that they will walk and do things according to your word, according to your Torah, your instructions for how they're to live and how they're to walk. So we thank you for that, Father. We lift up the young adults that are connected to House of Hope and Kavod Impact Center, that you keep them, that they have encounters with you, Heavenly Father. You pour out your Ruach Hakadesh on them, that they begin to have visions, that they begin to be awakened to their purpose and their calling and they get hungry that they will get hungry for the word and hungry for your presence and hungry for their purpose they'll begin to ask questions they'll begin to seek you said if we seek we will find you if we seek you we will find you Pray that you put a longing in their heart, a longing in their soul, a stirring in their soul and in their heart that something's missing. They're not walking with you. Something's missing. And pray that they feel that void and they understand, they come to an understanding that only Yeshua can fill that void in their life, that the things of this world will no longer satisfy. They will not find satisfaction. They will not find peace in the things of this world and the things of the flesh, Father. Surround them with strong, faith-filled young adults that are on fire for the king. That are on fire and that fire will spread throughout our young adults, Father, in the name of Yeshua. When they come to us and they're seeking answers, give us the wisdom, give us the words, show us. Give us the words to speak to them. In the name of Yeshua. Someone wanna pray for the ministry pillar? Dear Susan, yes. 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 
Would you pray for the education pillar? Can you do that? Thank Lord, you. I just thank you um, uh, for, I don't really know what that means, education pillar. Uh, education just, in general? Yeah, like public schools, private schools, um, colleges, universities, you know, homeschool. school. Our school. Thanks. Whatever you see, you know, however the father can move in that specific pillar. You know, you you're in that, you know, you've seen a lot of things and are awakened to and aware of what's going on. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, great. I could do that. Uh, but I just thank you uh, for the education pill pillar, Lord. The 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 car, especially in the 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 young 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 high school students going into college, Lord. Like that you br that you just bring uh, a a new clarity to those minds, uh, like because they go like a sheep to slaughter. And I, Lord, I just thank you that you, that you protect uh, the young, the young sheep going to into the school system, Lord, that you open their eyes to see what's going on, Lord. Um, the Lord, that the corruption that goes, goes um, from the, the, from the top of the school system to the bottom, Lord, that you begin to reveal what's going on, not only in the colleges, but in the, uh, but in the public school system, Lord, and even in the private school systems, that you begin to uh, reveal um, the evil that is that is going on, Lord, that you begin to to root out the evil and replace it with your good, Lord. Uh, I just thank you that you protect the students from the 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 wolves in sheep's clothing that would try to come and attack not only uh, not only the children of God, but the innocence in the school system, Lord, that, that, that you protect the children that are in the school system from the, the, the predators trying to come against them, Lord, that you just give a, a get that you, that, that a hedge of protection around those children, um, that the blood of Jesus is covering them that like that 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 you see what's going on lord and you protect them from from the things that they don't even know what's going that they don't even know that's going on lord i just thank you lord for kavod and um the the school there that you bless it with the with students lord um and that you bless it bless uh have more than enough lord um uh, to bring more than enough and bring students that are well are hungry for the word lord hungry to to know more about you not just not just bodies but but real students lord um and i just thank you for the the favor for the for the school and the and every teacher that you bring that you bring the teachers that need to be there lord and you bless bless each one of them that that gives their time to to 
to help disciple your children, Lord. And then you just that you just bless them for the time that they give, Lord. And I just thank you um, for a vision for the school, Lord. That that you that you uh, that you center the the vision of the school, Lord. That that you uh, order the steps of of um, the leader, people in charge of the school, and and uh, Stephen and Trina and anyone else that is leading that, Lord. And I just thank you that you just protect protect them from any attack that would try to come against them and the school, Lord. Um, and I just speak um, just the provision, Lord, in yes. the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you that you're hearing us tonight, Father. Thank you that we pray to a living Elohim. We pray to a living God. You are not dead. You are alive. You reign. You are on the throne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you are not dead. Thank you. Yeshua, our King, has risen and conquered death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Yeshua. You are so good. The government is truly upon your shoulders. Hallelujah. Wow. Stephen, can you pray for the government pillar? Please. Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the head of all government, Father, we just thank you for your leadership and your headship just give you glory and honor. We thank you that you are in charge, you're alive and well and on the throne. No matter what the Illuminati or deep state or whatever any Democrat or Republican says, you are in charge. This is your planet. The, the planet belongs to you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And so we just declare this is your planet. We have a contract with you and your Torah, Father God. And Father God, we just call back the nations to repentance, that we call back the nations to your authority, Father God, that you are the author and finisher of this place, Father God. You know exactly how this place needs to be ran. You've given us instructions on how it should be ran. And Father God, that we, we as a people have become rebellious, Father God, against your instructions. So we repent right now in the name of Yeshua, and we call forth us back. We call forth this nation back to your instructions, Call this nation back to what you set as the foundations of the earth, Father God, on the way things should be done in, in government, Father God. You, your shoulder, the government is upon your shoulder, Yeshua. And we just thank you for that. We thank you that you're the king of all, king of kings and lord of lords. We thank you, Father God, that uh, you're setting elders in place in your government, Father God. Elders in place in the body and in, in congregations, Father God. And nation building, Father God, within the bodies, Father God, as you begin to even bring nations, nation building, as you bring congregations together in fellowship, Father God, to build your kingdom, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, Father God, that you continue to establish elders in place, Father God, let the, let, let the right elders be in place, Father God, give us wisdom and guidance, Father God, impart them with wisdom and guidance, Father God, let them be pillars in the community, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, Father God, to resemble the work of Yeshua in the body, Father God. And we just thank you that for the equipping of the saints, Father God. And you continue to equip your, your, your people, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, by the use of elders, Father. Father God, let us not run away from your structure, Father God, in the name of running away from structure, Father God. Sometimes we have ran, ran away from your structure because out of, based off of fear, a false structure, Father God, in the name of Yeshua. So we just we just come into submission to your will and your way. We submit to your government right now in the name of Yeshua. Father God, by faith, no matter, no matter even if it doesn't look 100% right, Father God, by faith, we embrace what you said do, Father God. By faith, we serve you. Even submission, when, Father God, when there's submission in place, Father God, we submit as unto you, Father God. And whether a man blows it or not in leadership, Father God, has nothing to do with what we do, Father God. We, we continue, Father God, that you will honor our submission by faith, even when we submit, Father God, even as I submit, Father God. It is by faith. 
Let, let us, Father God, not forget that you are the author and finisher, Father God. You can remove and set up and tear down what whoever and whoever you see fit. Yeah. These are your decisions, Father. So we just submit to them right now in the name of Yeshua. Have your way. Mm -hmm. We just praise your holy name. We pray for our mayors in this city, Father God. We are not of this world, but we are in this world. So we pray for those mayors, Father God, that we find favor with them, Father God. Yeah. That, that when they set forth precepts in the city, Father God, statutes in the cities, Father God, that they are favorable to your people in the name of Yeshua, Father God. That you raise up righteous mayors and governors, Father God, in states and cities, Father God. You raise up sheriffs, righteous sheriffs, Father God, that aren't racist or bigots, Father God. That, Father God, uh, uh, actually go back to protecting and serving your people, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Father God. That they, uh, uh, you just raise up righteous individuals sent to those positions, Father God, of authority. And even this worldly government, Father God, and then we find favor with them, Father God. That they stand and don't bow to the ones of men, yes. Father God, in dictatorship, Father God. That they stand true to freedom and liberty, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Father God. We pray for our president, Father God. In the name of Yeshua, we just lift him up right now, Father God. Give him wisdom and guidance, Father God. And if he's if he's purposely doing things wickedly, Father God, send a spirit of confusion upon him, so he does the wrong thing, even when he means to do the opposite, Father God. That he does he does he does, he does when he tries to do wrong, he ends up doing right, Father. In the name of Yeshua, and he, he let him get confused and do the wrong thing that helps, Father. In the name of Yeshua, Father God. And he'll even be baffled at what he does in the name of Yeshua, Father God. We pray, Father God, that they can't help but not do right, Father God. Senators, Father God, we pray right now all throughout our government, Father God, for an exposing of wickedness in the name of Yeshua, Father God. Have mercy on those that are trying to live right and do their best, Father God. But, Father God, on those that are wickedly perverting things and manipulating things, Father God, we pray for a mighty exposure. Let them be uh, revealed and let, let. Father God, let them be dealt with, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Father God, mm -hmm. that don't cry out to you in repentance, Father God. Mm -hmm. let, them, let them be dealt with. So we need a cleansing in our government in the name of Yeshua. We need to be washed with the blood once again in the name of Yeshua. Father God, we just, we just we pray for help, Father God. Guide people how to vote, when to vote, what to vote, where to stand for, where to fight and where not to fight, Father God. We need leadership and direction, Father God, in this country. And, and, and the body as well, Father, we just thank you, yeah. Father God. Uh, teach us your truth, Father God, even in the midst yes. of wickedness, Father God. We pray, Father God, that, that, that the revealing of wickedness does not just happen in this worldly system or this worldly government, Father God, but sin starts at home, Father God. We pray, Father God, for those leaders that refuse to bow their knee to the king, that refuse to change their ways, Father God, and of wickedness, Father God. Not, I'm not talking about per people that aren't perfect, Father God. That's all of us. Father God, we're only perfect in you, Yeshua. But Father God, those that are doing wickedly yes. in secret places, yes. let it be revealed in the name of Yeshua. Yes. Let there be a great purging of sin. Not a purging yes. of people, but a purging of sin yes. in this country. We need real revival. May we repent from dead works in the name of Yeshua. We just thank you for that, Father God. We thank you that you are in control. And things will go only according to the way you let them, Father. Even if they build up a one world order, one world government, do all those things, it's only so that you can rule it. And that you will take it from them. In the name of Yeshua, Father God. We know, we declare that you have already won the battle. You have already won the war. Hallelujah. And by faith, uh, we will stand with you and reign with you forever. We thank you, Father. Father, you send in your word. You sent us out. You send us out like yes. sheep among wolves. I pray that you help us to recognize those that are operating as wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes. That you give us discernment. We need heightened discernment in these last days to be able to discern what spirits people are operating in. What spirit is behind the behavior and the action that we begin to recognize what those spirits are. And we come against those in the name of Yeshua. 
pray that your people begin to function and operate in the gifts of your Ruach HaKadosh, that we do have discerning of spirits, Father, the gift of healing. Healing will begin to manifest, that people will begin to be healed just as we walk by. Uh, shadows will begin to, people will raise up out of wheelchairs that people that have been sick for decades will begin to be healed that cancer will just fall off of people and dissolve in the name of yeshua all of these autoimmune diseases that doctors can't seem to figure out how to be healed that you will give us the wisdom that we will be able to help people to walk in that place of healing, that they, as they obey your word, they obey your commandments, that healing will manifest in their lives. Mental, mental health restored. Those that have been bound in depression and anxiety and fear and hopelessness for years will begin to praise the king. They will come out of anxiety. They will come out of depression and be set free from pharmacia in the name of Yeshua. That we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We will cast out devils. Those that are demonized as we walk by the way, as we go out, we go out about our day that people that are, that are filled with demons, we will cast those out in the name of Yeshua. Those that are dead spiritually and physically, those that are physically dead, we will raise them from the dead. Those are spiritually dead. We're going to be raised from the dead. Those that are spiritually blind, that their eyes will be open to the truth. Those that are spiritually deaf, their ears will be open to the truth. They will not run to, with itching ears. They'll run away. They will run away from the lies that are being told from pulpits. The, the false preachers and false apostles will be exposed and we will see them for who they truly are. People will see them for who they truly are and they will run to the truth and be set free in the name of Yeshua. Those that are spiritually lame that have not been able to walk spiritually, the lame will walk by faith. And in your truth, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Use us, Lord, use us. In these last days, use us. As we just surrender to you again and again, we ask you to use us, Father, for your glory. We want to see lives transformed. We want to see people truly set free and in right relationship with Yeshua. Lives restored. People that are just walking around hopeless and in despair. So many people just rushed out from that last couple of days at work. Yes. People are just literally out of their mind. They don't know what they're doing for. Mm -hmm. Show up and show up and show out of them, Lord, through us. Yes, Father. Bring them to healing if they suggest for Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Use us, use us, use us. Attitude and the way they're treating other people besides themselves. Self loathing, being oppressed and possessed by the enemy. Show up and show up and clear it all. Yes, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Just thank you for Julie, Father, and her heart to reach the lost. Thank you for her dedication. And when she goes out, she's on the Coda bus. Lord, and going about her day, that you will just pour afresh in her Holy Spirit, just pour afresh, rise up in her, rise up out of her, give her the boldness that she needs, but give her the wisdom, give her the wisdom that she needs 
as she goes out and she's out at these bus stops, if, she, if you give her a word that she will speak it and it will destroy yokes, that the anointing on that word will destroy yokes that are on people's lives. And the captives will be set free in the name of Yeshua. And I pray that you send in teams, send in teams of evangelists, Lord, create a team that can go out and truly evangelize and bring people to repentance and that they will surrender to the king in the name of Yeshua. Bring in the praisers and the, the worshipers, those that have gifts and talents, those that have the ability to sing and have the ability to play instruments, that you'll bring in skilled Skilled players, Lord, musical Levites, they will come in and we can have teams of worshipers and have 24-7 prayer and, and worship and giving you the glory and just inviting you in time and time and time again, and that your glory will just flow from this place and touch people's lives, that they will be drawn in by your presence, by your glory, by your manifest glory, fill this place, Father, in the name of Yeshua. So we can't even stand to minister. We want you to just take over. Take over. Take over, Father. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anything on anybody's heart to pray? Anything specific that we need to focus on? Children have been under attack. Amanda was in the hospital on Monday. She's okay, but she was a, so it was probably a chemical reaction at work. So her face went numb and her hands oh clenched. Her and she couldn't get them off the steering wheel as she was trying to go home. Um, and they couldn't find anything on her. And then Elisa, pretty sure she passed out last night. She was in her room and she reached to get something had fallen back behind her bed. And she reached and I don't know if she pulled something, but she said her arm just really hurt. Like really hurt. She didn't hit it. Which and on her right? Just somewhere, I don't know which arm it was. I wasn't at home. But um, she said she remembers laying on the bed, holding her arm. And then the next thing she knew, she was on the floor. So she fainted. And so I just feel like the enemy is just, but I also want to say if it's Allah trying to reach them and I am holding whatever it is, right. I just pray that they're reached. Protected but reached. Right. I mean, Father, just thank you for um, Susan and her family, for her children, every child that that she has, Father. We just pray that they just come that you draw them in to right relationship with you, Father, that these situations that you, even if it was from the enemy who meant evil, that you will turn it around, you will work it together for your good, for your purpose, that it will be used to draw them to you, Father. It will be used to awaken them, wake them up, and that they will begin to cry out to you, begin to pray and come into fellowship with you, that they will come to the understanding that you are the only one who can save. You are the only one who can rescue, that they need to cry out to you, Father, in the name of Yeshua. And just give Susan um, peace, help her to stand no matter, no matter what it takes. She just continued to walk by faith and, and not by sight. That you encourage and strengthen her heart. Give her the resolve that she needs to just stand firm and trust you. 
and believe you that you have heard the cry of her heart. You have heard her prayer for her house and you are doing a mighty work. We thank you for the mighty work that you are doing, Father. The work that you have begun, you will bring it to completion. And just help us to be a strength to our sister. Prompt us to pray when needed. In the name of Yeshua. Anna, do you have any special prayer requests or anything that you want to lift up to the Lord tonight? Um, I'm trying to think. I think just like, um, I, I think for me, it's just, it's been kind of hard to, to get some direction. I've been believing for like the healing of like, because I way back when I got diagnosed with ADHD and it's it's just been hard to 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 find a focus in my life and um just to like for me and my family and just that the that at my dad like that that he he is able to find a job or whatever he needs and that like because social security and stuff has been like not like for some reason like every time they do something it's like they won't they won't give him the money um and so maybe like a release of finances for our family and um uh, just uh, uh i don't know like a content like healing for my mind and and, and just uh continued healing over my mind and I think I think that's probably it Stephen do you want to pray for um Anna and her family I just feel like maybe you have a Father in the name of Yeshua Father God we just lift up the family right now Father God we come against all sicknesses and diseases in the name of Yeshua Father God we just rebuke it right now Uh, we just lift them up Father God and just Keep the blood of Yeshua over their lives and their, their family right now in the name of Yeshua, Father God. We also pray, Father God, uh, for their finances, like a, a release to be in their finances, Father God. Uh, Father God, but if something's holding it up, Father God, then there's a reason for it to show them why. So yes. they can make changes as well, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Father God. But we just pray, Father God, that the, uh, just the burden lifted in the name of Yeshua, Father God. Yes, some freedom yes. and some liberty, even in their finances, Father. And then Yeshua will speak shalom. Yes. To that right now, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Yes. And I just, colleagues, too. Yeah. Pray for the uh, Philip and Elizabeth and the children, Father God. Um, just pray, Father God, that you lead them through any storms of life in the name of Yeshua and give them direction. Send them a dream if need be, Father God. Send them, send them a dream to tell them what they're supposed to do, Father God. In the name of Yeshua, um, we just pray for that, Father. In the name of Yeshua, give you guidance and wisdom, Father God, wherever they're at right now, Father. In the name of Yeshua. I just want to come against the spirit of worry. The spirit of worry um, that has been trying to um, bring anxiety Anna <clears throat> just a reminder you do not have to be anxious for anything but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving you make your request known unto your heavenly father I knew I was going to get one I just didn't know when it was coming yeah I'm training spots okay all right so we're dealing with the spirit of anxiety which comes from worry so the main thing we have to realize is when we're dealing with things it's identifying of spirits whether something is of god or not yeah so you have to realize that every time there's worry it's not yeah it's already a different spirit that you have to rebuke that goes for all of us right anytime there's worry involved it's 
So what, what the enemy does is he'll try to make your worries become a reality, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you give into the spirit of worry and anxiety, the thing that you're afraid of is actually what you're giving life to mm -hmm. because it's in the wrong spirit. So for instance, if I was worried all the time that Trina was going to cheat on me, mm -hmm. I would become very jealous, right? Mm -hmm. And because of the worry, I'd become jealous. And if I was very jealous, would my wife be happy with our relationship? No. no. And then she might, I'm not saying Trina, but someone in that situation might actually end up in the arms of another man. So my fear would become a reality and I would, it would be because of my actions of reacting to the spirit of fear because I act, my actions show that I believe that she's going to cheat on me more than I believe that Yah will maintain our marriage because I've given into the spirit of fear. And that, gives, that goes across the board with everything. So if Trina is afraid that we won't have food in the house, she might start to behave a certain way, which may cause me to be not focused on what I'm supposed to be doing to provide because I'm dealing with what's going on in the home, which one then I'm not, I can't go provide because I'm always dealing with that, which could lead to no food in the house. We are our worst enemies. It's not even, I mean, Hasatan definitely is getting used in those areas. We have authority in Yeshua's name. So once we, we accept Yeshua, our own worst enemies are not, not even Hasatan. It's normally us because we're not fighting and standing and fighting against the spirit. So uh, when, when we pray against the spirit of worry, we have to realize that we're identifying anything. Is, if, we're, if we're operating in fear, it's not of Yah. It's, if it's the spirit of fear, spirit of anxiety, that's not Yah. So we know we can rebuke it. We know it's the enemy trying to sow seeds immediately. And so when we have an, uh, our, a thought in our mind, that's what we have to do. We have to cast away evil imaginations. So when we have a worry thought, we have to cast it down. right? Because we have to recognize, why, I'm worried. why am I so worried? No, 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 that's not Yah. Whatever that thing is telling you, because I've seen this with people, when they're worried, they had this whole scenario worked up in their head. They, you did not get that scenario from you. It's vain imagination. That spirit of anxiety is sowing you a vision in your head. And whether you accept it or not is going to depend on which vision you're going to accept. So it's very important to cast down vain imaginations, right? Just, ah, that ain't yeah. And so to learning to recognize at the beginning whether something's from Yah or something's not is very important. In the spirit of worry, Yeshua does not make us worry. Trina will tell you, when if I got a word from something, it doesn't matter how bad things get. I'm like, whatever. I, I don't. It's I, I don't get worried about it. I'm not saying never. I mean, I, I'm a man. I, I get worried just like everyone else, right? But I'm just saying you have to cast it down, and you have to. Sometimes that takes training and discipline over time, right? You have to start just casting it down and recognizing. That's the spirit of a it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a different spirit yeah. trying to attack you. And so you have to recognize if I had an evil thought, like, I, oh, I'm looking at you. So that'll be easy. I, I did not, that did not sound good. For instance, if I had a thought about another woman, is that clearly not y'all? This is not a debate, right? I, uh, I remember when uh, I heard a famous preacher one time, he came and he said to all these women were saying, oh, you married the wrong woman. You were supposed to marry me. That's <laughs> demonic, right? If someone is married, you are not supposed to be having feelings towards them, period. So you cast the, the vain imagination down. If I start, my mind starts wandering into another woman, I got problems. I, I, I have to cast that thing down. So if I said I never had a thought about anyone else since me and Trina have been married, that would be a lie. A thought is, have I entertained thoughts? That's another story, right? You are not supposed to be entertaining. You're not supposed to be entertaining worry. You're not supposed to entertain fear, right? If something is feeding into it, for instance, I, I, I don't get scared easy. If I watched a Jason uh, psycho thriller, what, I don't know, psycho movie, or Michael Myers, whatever that stuff is, right? And I, I feel a spirit of fear coming on me. Well, clearly, it's, look what I'm watching, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes we give entrance to it. It's like, for instance, Trina and I watched a movie the other day. There was a witchcraft scene, not towards the people, but in the movie, right? 
Uh, and in my dream, there was someone running around my dream trying to get someone to repeat the witchcraft that was on that t-shirt. It so came from the movie. It was on the t-shirt in the movie. Well, it wasn't, no, no, it was a separate t-shirt. It was a, they had a t-shirt with a Ouija board on it. But I recognized the spirit and I rebuked it even in the dream, right? And so then it, it went off to try, and it actually went to Trina and then Trina rebuked it in the dream. I didn't take that part. But, and, and so then it left, right? And so we have to cast down those vain imaginations. And if you're struggling with something, even in sleep, it's, you should be praying about where is it coming? How's it, how does it even have authority to be in here? How to get in here, right? So if there's a spirit of worry, it's being allowed access for a reason. What is the reason? Right? I've seen some people because uh, the pharmaceutical they teach, which is sorcery, they're committing sorcery, which gives that spirit of fear grounds to be there and harass them. Right? So we have to we have to realize we have to cast down vain imaginations and stay on the root of the problem. We get caught up in surface issues all the time. Well, I got me and my boyfriend are fighting, uh, and I, I want you to help us with that. They don't want me to help normally because I'm like, why do you fight me? Well, we're fighting because I think he's, why do you think that? Has he ever cheated on you before? No. Have you ever been cheated on before? Yes, I'm afraid. Oh, you're afraid. You have to, as you get to the root of the problem, the fight is coming because you're walking around in fear all the time. So you're attacking your boyfriend like he's a potential, uh, he's going to do you harm any second because that's what you're used to. Right. And so you're, you're, you're causing problems, which will lead to if they're not you know, strong enough, of course, they, they will lead to actually do what you are leading them to do. They'll give into it because at some point they're going to be like, well, I get accused of cheating all the time. What's the difference? I like the example you gave, though, because it's that the fear and the worry, you begin to act a certain way. Yeah. It's, you start to behave a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then that causes the other person to respond in a certain way based on your behavior because your behavior is not in faith it's in fear or worry right so in the king james the word is uh, lasciviousness yeah and, and it's a lack of restraint of the mind you we let our minds wander so sometimes if you're letting your mind wander into those things and you can't seem to stop it's because you're not really focused you have to get on the offensive if you stay on the defensive if i'm always going oh i had to avoid her I have to avoid her. And the focus is always on some other woman. No, no, my focus is more, if it's on a woman, it's on Trina. I get offensive with it, right? So I don't got time to be looking, I'm looking at her. And it's the same thing with when you're dealing with spiritual warfare, we have to get focused on our king. What's he telling us to do right now? If I'm sitting around struggling with something, maybe like one time I, I told this testimony, Trina was gone for a month. More than once. More than once. I had a rough moment, very rough, and I was struggling very bad uh, in my head. And finally, the rock said, leave the house. Like, I'm just sitting there on the couch. No wonder I'm struggling. I'm sitting there thinking about when's Trina coming. I get up and leave just in time. One of Trina's friends was wandering down the street and she knew Trina was gone, was coming to the house. She was an acquaintance. Not quite, I, yeah, no, I'm just summarizing, right? And so, look, I'm not saying I would let her in or whatever, but you never know. I was already struggling. I, I just give the Lord the praise for victory, even if I didn't see a big, even if I didn't think there was going to be, I don't care, right? He prevented it before I even cried out, he answered Right. So I just give him honor for that. But if I wouldn't have gotten out of the house, who knows where I would have ended up. And so a lot of times when you're struggling with something, it's because you're not on the offensive. You're not doing what he's telling you to do. You're sitting around thinking about stuff you shouldn't even be thinking about. What are you even wondering about that stuff? Where are we going to get groceries tomorrow? Wow. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed baking bread. We're going to get groceries tomorrow. I ain't never starved. I've been without income. For 20 something years, I ain't never going without food. One time I mismanaged my uh, meal money and I, I, I missed the meal once. You know, that was self inflicted though. I was stupid, <laughs> right? And I knew it. I didn't start. Y'all provides and I don't have any money. And then most of the people I know have jobs and have money coming in. You're not going to start. 
it's not gonna start. It's not something to worry about, right? And so I just, I, I wanna be clear about dealing with the spirit, whatever it is, whether it's worry, it's fear, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, no matter what it is, is you have to get to the root and as soon as it comes in, you have to just start discerning and cast. You have to, that's what Calvary Comer is all about, light heavy. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It's about removing sin while it's light. So if you, you have a problem with eating the wrong things and then you go grocery shopping every time you're starving, it's the worst time. No, when you, you eat before you go to the store so that you're in a strong mode when you go, right? That's, that's, that's being on the offensive. You, you know your weaknesses. You make the adjustments based off of those things you know, right? I need to get better at that. I go to training with the store. If I'm hungry, it gets, she'll tell you I buy the worst stuff in the world. I'm talking about myself, right? <laughs> We don't shop it's together. Easy to do. <laughs> when I don't go, the food is much healthier. That's all I'm saying. Oh, so we're having chips for three days. Okay. This is awesome. What's wrong with chips for dinner? You can have nachos three days in a row. Nachos sounds good. No, but when you're talking about Not good. <laughs> not eating the bread of idleness. Not eating the bread of idleness. So we don't get idle. And then that opens up an opportunity, well, not even an opportunity, but a window to start worrying and think about things that we should not be because we're not being busy with the work or whatever it is that Yah has told us to do for that day. Mm -hmm. We become idle. So that is a way for idleness is terrible. It'll flesh. Kill idleness will kill you. Idleness. It'll kill your whole world. Laziness. Yeah. It is a destroyer. So we are and you'd be surprised at what he tells you to do. He could tell you to create a sun oven, right? With your time. Did you, right, you bought a sun oven? Is that what you said? Ask Susan. She has one. Oh, okay. I was like, what? what is right? that? Matthew and Dan one night stayed up all night and they made these. Right? Really? Yes. I just, I really feel, I believe that it's so important um, that the psychological warfare has really ramped up spiritually, that we truly, we have to guard our hearts. We have to really uh, focus on and be aware of how we're thinking and be aware of, you know, whether is it our own thought is it a thought that has been planted by the enemy or one of his uh, i'm going to give my own testimony because i don't um, want to talk about no so for instance i didn't see i saw my children one weekend in two years one time right not by my will i i wanted to see them every weekend every day uh but they were kept from me someone intentionally kept them from me it was a very hard two years and then even outside of those two years for a long time i barely got to see them it hurt I cry myself to sleep on occasion. It, it sucked, okay? So when I finally get them back into my life, I just wanted to hold on to them. But now they're teenagers. They're actually yeah. 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 yeah, you know how teenagers are with parents. Yeah, they're pretty prickly. If I, like, if I got really <laughs> clean, that could be a problem. Do you know how hard it was? I, Trina and I talked about it. I had to fight my own urges because I knew that's not what they needed, even though that's what I wanted. Because I just, after not seeing them for so long, I just wanted to hold on to them. But if you do that with teenagers, oh, they'll kick you. Because <laughs> now they're 24 and 23. Right, and so now I, I, that time is gone. I never got it back. I get it in other ways and you know other stuff, but I have to wait for y'all to do that. I cannot force it. And that's what people do. If I get a thought and look, Everyone, if I did it, everyone would understand why I did it, but it would not have benefited my children. It would have been selfish. It would have only benefited me, which wouldn't have benefited me because then they would have kicked it out. Then when it came over, they wouldn't have spent time with me the way they started to, right? And so it was very tough. I was able to get through it. Was it perfect? No, I had moments just like any normal person, right? 
but I, I, because I was aware of it, I fought against it all the time. It's being too clean. Like when they came over, you know, I, I could have sat on the couch for two days straight and just hugged them. Mm-hmm. I really could have. Cause I, I wanted their, I wanted to be around them so bad, but that's not healthy for teenagers. Yeah. They don't want to do that with that. They want to come over and they want to play. They want to, you know, and you got to have, you still, now they want freedom and you got to give them your freedom because or else they'll turn 21, 22 or 18 and then they'll run off and get their freedom their own way. And that's bad. You don't want that. All right. So you have to, I still, I had to, I had to act like I got everything I needed for 10 years, basically 10, 12 years. I had to act like I got everything as a parent. I, was, all that, I had to act like it. It sucked. It still sucks. <laughs> but this is it. My, my, when, it, when they start showing up, my son would say stuff like, Dad will talk you to death. Yes, it will. Life lesson 5,622. Here we go. That's what he would say. <laughs> I mean, now he comes for life lessons, right? He comes because he wants to know. But it was just the time period. We all have individual things, individual stories, different issues, right? Uh, some people have, uh, you know, like I said, I said ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriend issues, and they bring them into a new relationship, right? And they, then they judge the current person based off of what the last person did, and it causes problems in the relationship. It's bad. You have to know. Look, when I went through a ministry split, after being with someone in ministry for 10 years, my best friend, right? Well, he's the, my, I don't, my best friend's Gabriel. He's down low, low, but t- one of my closest friends, right? I'm with him for ministry for 10 years. I'm 80 hours a week together, which is insane, by the way. But, and we flowed together really good. It was amazing. A lot of powerful stuff happened, right? We did all this other stuff, but then we split. I think y'all split it in my first, right? See, I got a witness. I didn't minister for a year, pretty much. I had some stuff I had booked. I kept those appointments, but I avoided preaching or anything or rebuking anyone for a year. Not because it's a sin for me to rebuke someone or preach. I realized how bad I was hurting and struggling. And not just me, the congregation was struggling from me. They did. Lord, don't, they, no one needs rebuked right now. The main thing they need is they need to be comforted, they need to be encouraged. They need to know you're there for them because they're, they're gonna, there's going to be people who have tendencies not to trust that you're there for them. That was the speech I got after the split, right? And so I had to fight the normal reaction sometimes. Like I see something wrong. And I'm like, I'm about to <laughs> rebuke the snot out of this person. And he was like, no, right? And I didn't want to preach because if I preached, there was a lot of extra emotion in my preaching. It's be, it was coming. You didn't want to tap into pain while you're preaching. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. Why? And then when I was in, why? It's emotionalism. You will take it out on the people you're preaching at. If someone wounds me, I will actually start wounding other people even as I preach. And preachers do it all the time. I see it. Dude is wounded and he should not be opening his mouth. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying they're intentionally doing it, but that's what it's. It's called a. Uh, it's it's a sin that multiplies. You're offended, so you go offend other people. Men understanding out of an offense is a very dangerous thing. You're only making things worse. So it's better for you not to say anything. And I had to do. I, I did. I basically kept my mouth shut for a year, and I was the leader. Good luck with that, by the way. So it's not like I never talked, but I would just have to be very careful. Always fighting urges and everything else. It changed me for the good. My wife's like, yes, it did. So when I, I went through my non tour terror stage. It made a big difference. Right? Good job. I, I just, look, we have to deal with, we have to be honest with ourselves and know what we suck at. And it's, look, that's the problem is I talk to people. Okay, I'll go there. <laughs> so I talked to someone this week. And they're going through all kinds of stuff. And this is, they're in a whirlwind. And I, I, I actually think I know why, right? But every time that I went to open my mouth, they're like, but I'm good. It's, everything's great. And everything's whatever. You're not trying to hear nothing. I can't, I'm not going to waste my breath. I'm not going to waste my breath. Why? This, 
you have to be honest with Elohim. And if you don't know, then you tell him, I don't know, am I doing something wrong? And he will show you. He appreciates the honest prayer. I pray I don't know something all the time. In every ministry we've been a part with in the Hebraic, there's always at least a couple people in the congregation that know more Torah than I do. I don't care. That has nothing. I'm not afraid of people that have more knowledge of the Torah. Some people are. That doesn't make, that's, just, that's not who, I am who I am. I'm supposed to be. So I did this and bug me. And when you know who you're supposed to be, all that, when anyone else does, it's not bug me. Right? They're being who they're supposed to be, whatever. And besides, most, most of the time, I, even when people knew more Torah, they didn't live more Torah. I mean, there's a difference. <laughs> Knowledge is one thing. Living it is another. Right? And application is another. So I tend to focus on the application part of Torah. Right? Because that's what matters. So, well, and I believe we are in a time where we really have to know that Yeshua is enough. We have to individually um, be steadfast in our faith and in our walk with him. Because no matter what my husband may do, you know, he's a man. He is imperfect. What? You know, no, I what? have to, you know, pray for Yah to keep him, preserve him and help him in his walk so he doesn't fall away so he's not deceived so you know but at the end of the day if something were to go you know sideways i have to be steadfast in my walk with my king my personal relationship and know he is enough for me i am fulfilled in him i can only be healed by yeshua mm -hmm. You know, my husband can be used to wash me with the water of the word, and he is to do that for me. And he's supposed, to, you know, he's a strength in my life and a protector and an example of the king. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he's not going to be standing with me when I have to stand and give an account for my life. Nobody is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're in a time you know, our faith is being tested. My, you know, I have to know if my husband doesn't have, you know, a large sum of money and finances that my provider, the, the father has shown himself faithful in my life. I have seen him open doors for me and make a way for me, make rivers in the desert for me way before I married Stephen Fabian. I mean, those are the things that I body. have to stand firm on and remember. It's important that we remember what he has done for us, where he brought us from and how faithful he has been and that he will remain faithful to us. And if there's an area of our life, an area of our heart that needs to be healed, we need to present that to him. And like Stephen said, be honest be vulnerable and open and say, you know what? I am hurting. I am wounded. I am offended. Or, you know, I am afraid. I don't know how to walk through this. Please increase my faith. Help my unbelief. Whatever it may be, we have to cry out to him for those things. But no, he's faithful. He is faithful. Yeah, I, I want to share something to you. So, for instance... Again, recognizing the spirit you walk in, being honest with yourself. Uh, if Trina sus submits to me, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be based off of anything I do. She submits to me because the scripture tells her to. So she, it's a matter of faith for her that the Father's telling her to trust Him to deal with me if I'm cuckoo for cocoa bus, right? That she doesn't have to be the one that deals with me all the time, right? And so a lot of women sometimes will start off like I'm, I submit to my husband. But the moment the husband makes a mistake, they don't submit no more. And I'm saying it has nothing to do with that. The act of submission isn't about the person you're submitting to at all. It's about submission to the king and what he's telling you to do. And even like if people came in here and they wouldn't submit to anything in here, we would never have a conversation. People would be talking 24-7. They'd be interrupting They'd be because they wouldn't have their own conversation, right? There's a, even when in a congregation, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, at least a partial submission has to take place in anything. On a job, there's submission. If you go to a restaurant, there's some type of submission to even be in the building. 
You can't just do whatever you want in the middle of the restaurant. No, you can't let your children run. Like yes, there's still going to be some type of submission. Take sides of other people's plates. So when I say submission, I'm not talking about control freak stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying to act as submission has nothing to do with the person you're submitting to. I submit to the restaurant when I go into the restaurant, and it has nothing to do with whether I like the restaurant or not. It has to do with the fact that I'm submitted to the king and there's, there's an order in the house and I'm, I'm trying to be an example of my king in that place, right? And so it, it has nothing to do with, my faithfulness to Trina has nothing to do with her behavior. And this, men do this all the time, right? My wife's acting up, so I'm gonna go get it over here. No, I mean, I'm supposed to be faithful to my wife, whether, to be honest, even if she was Gomer, right? And Gomer's sleeping around on Jose, he was still faithful to her. Her behavior has nothing to do with how I, no, no. I, I'm not saying a woman or a man, vice versa, can't make it difficult <laughs> to treat them well, right? Because obviously sometimes you're like, you are really pushing it, <laughs> right? But I'm um, really, that's <laughs> Look, I, I, I went through one divorce. I, 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 I've admitted that before. So it's a public knowledge thing, right? <laughs> At times, right? I mean, what he, her own testimony is I should have taken her out back and shot her. So that's her testimony. Uh, and I said, <laughs> I, I laughed at that, but in my head, I said, I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just we will not be uploading this on. Yes, the- I will, because I don't care. I'm not ashamed of who I am and what the Lord has brought me through. I'm, I'm just saying, look, there, there's faithfulness has nothing to do with other people. Humbleness has nothing to do with other people. Humility has nothing to do with other people. Faith has nothing to do with anyone else. So like, for instance, when I went through a ministry split and the other guy was robbing me, right? I had to let it go. And trust, look, a thief owes sevenfold, but I'm battle against flesh and blood. So my, even if he robs me, he did rob me of what, uh, like a, a 800 square foot place. He did. He robbed me. Plus stuff in it, right? So he didn't rob me of that, but I don't battle against flesh and blood, so I'm not battling against him. So he asked me for stuff. I went and took it to him. My stuff. That was not easy, right? But you know what happened? We ended up with 6,000 square foot building. 800 times seven is what? Oh, yes. I got my sevenfold return from the enemy because the enemy was using him. My battle was against the enemy, and I defeated the enemy by giving up my stuff because it's not about stuff. Right. Right? And so that's where the faith process comes in. No one can stop you from anything. No one stopped Yeshua from doing what he was called to do. No one can stop you. No bad spouse can stop you. No bad friend can stop you. Only you can stop you. The enemy doesn't even have enough power to stop you if you got Yeshua. Amen. No one can stop you. You are literally undefeatable with Yeshua. No one can beat you. It may look like it in a carnal way, but that does not mean if our goal is not to sin, our goal is not to do this and make money and do that. Our goal is to do what he said and not sin. That's our goal. So I've had businesses that I've given away. Why? Because it kept me from sinning. Because I probably would have if I would have kept it. I had to walk away from jobs because it was leading me down the wrong path. Because my soul was the most important thing, not the money, not the job. I, I hope this helps. The priority yeah. in the situation. We don't battle against flesh and blood. We don't battle against people. Nobody can stop you. No demon can stop you. Earlier this week, I was praying on my house to show said, You're invincible, Hannah. Yeah, Yeshua, he, Yeshua corrected me. I mean, he, he rebuked me, but it was in love. And he said, I have already done everything and supplied you with everything that you need to succeed. I've already done it. It's done. We have his Ruach HaKadosh. We have his word. He has resurrected. We have everything. We have him. So here's what I try to tell people because they get so carnal with stuff, right? We do stuff by faith. 
Now, look, if Yah says, I want you to start a store and I got $100,000, it's not a mystery. I take money and I go buy product, right? But I had to do this thing with no money. So it didn't work like that for me. Uh, when we, he was telling me to do certain things with the store, Christian Army closed down and they donated all their product. We went to go buy a building and I was going to call the Christian Armory guy. This is before he gave us all the stuff, right? I'm going to call him and uh, he never answers his phone because he's just so busy. He, he lives in Arizona. So, you know, he's going to call the phone and say, hey, I'm going to go look at this building. I'm going to go do an auction. I'm in route. I call the phone I, and I'm just because I'm just like, I'm, I have to call him because we're supposed to be trying to do something together. And he picks up the phone, which I'm already like, huh? He said, really? Where's it at? I'm down the street. What? You're in Columbus, Ohio. Yes, I'm right down the street. I'll be there. And shows up at the auction. He had 10 minutes. What's the chance of that? And that, this is my thing. Every time we've done something, it's always whatever we had was enough. Look at the chairs. You know how much we pay for these chairs? Nothing. Well, and you just drove the neighborhood. You were driving the neighborhood and found this place. It wasn't like it was for sale by owner, so we, it, we, it was never listed. Yeah. And we actually looked at this the other side that's taken now before, but it was too small. It was smaller than this, and then we're just like, it's just too small. We can't do that. <laughs> if it's an additional room, that's something else, you know. But and so we just we just put it on hold and came back a few months later, and we found this. It's been enough. I mean, who would have known these chairs would all fit in here after being next door? I'm still amazed that they fit in here. I mean, I see it every day, but it's it. They should not fit in here. We took a whole building that was twice as, maybe three times bigger over there, and the chairs were all in there, and they fit in here. That didn't make no sense. It's like Yah Supernatural did something. I, I don't even know. I don't even understand it. But it is. I we don't have a great. We have a speaker system back there for evangelism. We're still putting together parts. We're missing one amp is all we have left. Otherwise, the whole system is put together. We need one amp. That's it. And someone's already pledged to give us an amp, which he hasn't brought yet. That's another story. All right? And so, look, the property down south, look at the size of our congregation. We have no business owning 300 acres in the cut. We, we have no business. We should have no chance at all to own such a thing. But yeah, we do. Yah provides. Everyone's always looking, I got to do this. I got to maneuver this to get this and get this. And I'm not saying sometimes if he tells you to do that, you should. But on, my whole point is you don't, to do what he tells you to do, all you got to do is be obedient. You don't have to manipulate anything. I didn't have to go to the bank and beg the, first of all, I ain't got no credit. I've been living with no income for 20 years. My credit sucks, yeah. but yet it's never stopped me from being able to buy something and make payments on occasion. There's been some income in there throughout the yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. has been yeah, yeah. on and seasons off. Yeah, yeah. Of, Where he told me to do something. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I don't look. For instance, I don't. I don't judge anything off my wallet. Period. I I can't. So for instance, if I have. $20 in my wallet and I have no gas and I feel led to go to Dan's house. I put the 20 in the tank and I go to Dan's. I don't care if I have something to do the next day. That's how I operate. <laughs> She's like, yes, it is. You drive me crazy sometimes. I'm sure I do. It's, I mean, Hoshea used to say this. He's like, You're nuts, bro. <laughs> it's always in a, but look, by the next day, we have it. It all, and it comes, I, I, this is, I have to flow with where he's telling me to do. If he tells me to do something and I have just enough to do it, praise y'all. Tomorrow is a different day. And, and so it's just a matter of being obedient, listening to him, following his instructions and not trying to do it your way. Most people are calculating, well, I can do this if I go to work for six days. And look, I'm not saying that never happens, right? So don't get condemned if you've done that. I've done that, right? But not, that's not normally how it happens. You know what I mean? People are calculating. They're like, oh, after four years, I'm going to be able to afford this. Four years? Right. Oh, I'm going, oh, I want to throw up already. I don't know. 
we are able to do what he's called us to do. That's my, that's my judge of fruitfulness, is are we able to do what he's telling us to do? If we are, it's fine. If we're not, something's wrong. And so I'm going to pray, what needs to change? And I have not begged him to let me go get a job before. I have done that. I have. Because it just makes so much more logical sense to me. I, he'll be like, no. No? Okay. <laughs> and I mean, I, you think I rejoice, right? But that's not my mentality. I, I could just think, this would be a lot easier. Don't you think it'd be easier? I mean, it wouldn't be faith. It'd be you working your hand. I need, and that's just, that's what he's put on me. I'm not saying that's for anyone else. That's for me. Well, he responds, he responds to our faith, not. Mm -hmm. you know, Most people don't realize that, like for instance, when I went full time, everything that I did not have by him, I lost. Everything. I lost my car. I, you know, I lost all kinds of stuff. And I just watched it go. You know, I lost a lot of stuff. I had four jobs. The jobs were the reason why I had all that stuff. So the moment I didn't have it, I lost it all. And then he had to build me up from the ground up with no money. Right? And so I, I'm, just, I'm just saying that. I'm not saying you should be broke or you should be, I'm not saying nothing, nothing crazy like that. I'm just saying the obedience aspect, everything else is a distraction. The spirit of fear trying to get you, well, how are we going to live if I do that? You're already doing that a long path. This is why discernment comes in. If people come in for counseling, as soon as they open their mouth, I already, by the time they're done talking, I almost know everything that's going on because that level of discernment, knowing, recognizing the spirit, that they'll tell you what spirit they're dealing with. Well, this is what I want to do. What's stopping you? Well, I need the money. I, to say this to someone like me, I just want to laugh at you. I'm sorry. Money? Okay. I, I, money answers all things. I'm not anti-money, but... You're telling me that God told you to do something, but you can't do it because he's not providing. That's what you're telling me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. He's, he does. And sometimes he's just waiting for you to take a step before he writes the check. Right? He's just like, I told him to move. They're not moving yet. I know people that will wait their whole life to move, and then they'll be gone. It's too late. Well, he told I could have been somebody. To put all my stuff in the trunk of my car. And to drive out to World Harvest Church back in 2003, mm -hmm. I broke the lease with the apartment I was living in because I was living, I was shacked and, up. And most, yeah, you were shacked up. I was shacked up. Calvin Palmer, he most people would have condemned you for breaking the lease. You broke your word. You broke a contract. Which is more important? Well, I went to Being the shacked office. up. I went to the man's office and I asked them if they would let me out of the lease. Which is righteous. And they did. And I drove Ordered. out to World Harvest Church. I had three dollars to my name i because i was living in disobedience mm -hmm. i had started to have physical problems i was reverting back to um not a sound mind um i lost my job you know i um was having panic attacks and stuff again and i just i told the, the guy I was shacked up with, I said, my soul and my relationship with Yeshua is more important to me than a season of sin with you. I'm leaving. And I had to obey what the father was telling me to do. And he, that door opened that night. I moved into the house of Esther the next day. Um, I was, I think, 23 years old at that time. I only had to pay $250 a month in rent. All the groceries that I needed, everything that I wanted to eat was provided. The fridge was completely full. The freezer was packed full of food. All I had to do was cook it. All of my, um, you know, body wash, shampoo, everything was provided for me. But if I hadn't taken that step and trusted the Lord and obeyed him, I was going completely in the wrong direction. I may have ended up in a psychiatric, psychiatric hospital for all I know if I would have disobeyed and continued in that relationship. But he's faithful, you know, if we will really obey him. Because I didn't know where I was going, where I was going to stay. I had no money, no job, nowhere to go. I was homeless. And I think this is where the prosperity gospel has messed people up the most. People look around, they go to church, they pay their tithes, right? Which is an act of faith, I'm not, I'm not denying sure. that, right? And they have a lot of money. 
And so they think they're like, almost like super spiritual now. Like I, you know, I have more money than you, so I must be living holier than you. This is kind of like that thing. And they, they're not living by faith at all. I mean, they have parts of their life. They said they, they declare Yeshua. Bravo. They pay their tithes if they do that. Praise God. But that's the extent of their faith. Right? If you ask them, when's the last time you got a word? They'll be like, huh? I read the Bible and I tried to adjust according to the word. Have you ever heard his voice? Uh, uh, well, my sheep know my voice is what he said. You don't know his voice. Now I'm questioning whether you're even his sheep or your wolf. How do I know? What do you do for a living? You're talking about you have all this money. Oh, I do this job. I'm like, uh-huh. I couldn't do that job. Because I would have to sacrifice my soul to do it. And that's what happens with a lot of corporations. You get that upper management. They take all your time. You don't have, you don't have time with your family no more. You don't have time with nothing. They will take your soul for a paycheck. I'm not they not the moment you die, they just pass you on and pull someone else into your position, man. They do not care. And if they can, they'll get out of paying you your uh, retirement fund if they could get out of it. It's all about mm -hmm. well, Praise I, just, I just believe tonight that what we need to take away from this, though, is just the faith. You know, and if we are in a battle in that area, if there's any struggle in that area, that we continue to pray for the Father to increase our faith, help our unbelief, help us to hear clearly what it is that he wants us to do or not do. You know, either way it goes. But that we truly will walk in a whole nother level of faith and trust in him and just know he's with us. He said he would be with us always, even unto the end. He's with us. And we can take that to the bank, you know, cash it in 100%. I just truly believe that that is the Father's heart for us. And he wants to remind us of that and strengthen us in our resolve to be able to stand firm. Stand firm. And when that worry tries to creep in, we recognize and cut it off in the beginning stages. Don't let our mind wander. Don't let our mind create these scenarios of what could possibly happen if things don't go this way or that way or the other. But his word will rise up in us. His truth will rise up in us. He will bring those things to our remembrance when we need it, when we need it the most. He will bring those things that he has spoken to us. He will bring those things to our remembrance. And so it's just my prayer that our ears will truly will just be attentive to his voice, that we will hearken and obey. He said, if we are willing, if we will be willing and obedient, that we will eat the good of the land. Mm -hmm. So that I just want to just reiterate that as we close out tonight. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that he's been driving into me. It's reminding me our hope, our trust, and our faith has to be in him and him alone. Not in what things look like. Not in our bank account. Not in what our friends are doing. Not in what our spouse is doing. Not in what our parents are doing. Not in what our siblings are doing. Not in what anybody else is doing around us. But what is he doing? What is he speaking? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Oh, it's at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Father, we just thank you tonight. Hallelujah. You are so faithful to us. And we can just stand firm on that truth. You have proven yourself time and time again. And when things look rocky, when things don't look the way that we expected them to, we can remember we can remind ourselves of your faithfulness in our lives and all that you have brought us through, where you have brought us to, hallelujah. So just thank you that you are our help. You are our help. Let me just stand on that tonight. Thank you for the reminder. And I just pray that that, that word just takes deep, deep root in us. Everyone that's here that's present tonight, everyone that's connected to Kavod Impact Center, to House of Hope, that faith will rise up in us. 
trust in you will rise up in us, that we will stand firm in the name of Yeshua. May Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you, lift up his countenance on you and give you his shalom. And even right now, we speak healing over Sandy Fabian tonight. She was not able to be here tonight. We just right now lift her up to you, Father. I pray that you touch her where she needs a touch. We just speak life and health over her right now, but give her the wisdom to do what she needs to do. If there's something that... Um, that she needs to do. Just give her uh, direction on what it is that you desire for her to do. If it's rest, if it's hydration, if it's prayer, if it's whatever it is that you want her to do, that she just hears that word from you and she'll listen and obey. In the name of Yeshua. Love you guys. Bye, Bye Susan. Bye, Julie. Bye. 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 Bye.